Perhaps what one wants to say is formed in childhood and the rest of one's life is spent trying to say it. I know that all I felt during the early years of my life in Yorkshire is dynamic and constant in my life today. I became a sort of bird soaring over the landscape at the furious pace of about 25 miles per hour and being very careful not to disturb the horses and drivers of their carts, we roamed through the dales and valleys and up the moors and through the Pennines. From the deep indigo and blacks and scarlets of the industrial heart, we sailed through unimaginable beauty of unspoiled countryside. I had an attic room and would get up at dawn to go painting all by myself and undisturbed in a world of fantastic beauty. The rocky scars, the boats, sea and cliffs inspired me continuously. Artists lived in Robin Hood's Bay and I was able to go and sniff the smell of paint and canvas and explore this wonderful free world of changing light and tide and colour. More and more I observed the granite sets, the steep hills of industrial Yorkshire, the scurrying of mill girls in their shawls, huddled against the cold and wind, the lonely figure against a street gas lamp, the squatting miner outside his door, and the gleaming withinness of his sparkling ugly house. Whenever I am embraced by land and seascape, I draw ideas for new sculptures, new forms to touch and walk round, new people to embrace, with an exactitude of form that those without sight can hold and realise. All my early memories are of forms and shapes and texture. Moving through and over the West Riding landscape with my father in his car, the hills were sculptures, the roads defined the forms. Above all, there was the sensation of moving physically over the contours of fullness and concavities, through hollows and over peaks, feeling, touching, seeing through mind and hand and eye. This sensation has never left me. I, the sculptor, am the landscape.